Good morning. Good Friday. This day always feels funny to me. I mean, you know, you get up in the morning, you got your regular stuff you got to do, and um, and you're thinking about this terrible tragedy that doesn't seem to fit with the day, does it? And we try to make it a somber day. But there's lots of non-somber things going on all around us. I think that's how life is. I kind of like to focus on that. I, I tend to dwell in my sermons and devotions on contrasts. Because I think contrasts make things clearer. And uh, we're going to think about that today. So we're going to begin <clears throat> with a very reflective hymn. I like this kind of this kind of hymnody where it just gives you time to think about the words. Hymn number 434, Lamb of God, Pure and Holy. Lamb of God, Pure and
We read in Mark chapter 15, verse 16, where Jesus is mocked. And the soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole battalion and they clothed him in a purple cloak. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed and spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. And they led him out to crucify him. I picked those verses because it happens indoors. They led him away into the Praetorium where nobody else goes. They're not allowed there. It's the Roman, Roman barracks, right? And all this stuff is happening. And where's everybody else? You know, when, when Jesus was taken away and he was tried before the high priest, um, Peter was able to be outside. John was able to be inside because he had relatives or friends or they were somehow connected. He could observe what was happening. <clears throat> Nobody was with Jesus and Pilate. Uh, they saw him brought out and shown to the crowd. Nobody was with Jesus behind closed doors in the barracks. These things, uh, what God is doing for us, and the most momentous things in history are going on while we're not watching. Um, uh, Fox News had a, there was a, there's been a video clip at the top of their page um, night vision camera from the border, a couple of uh, these coyote um, uh, human smuggler people dropping two toddlers over this 14-foot fence, <clears throat> climbing up the fence and dropping these kids, you know, and then dropping a bag after them and then running off. Um, uh, we were sleeping, right? We were all dozing away. Thinking about what time do I have to get up in the morning? Well, that's taking place. Um, uh, what else? I mean, all, what's happening right now? Well, you're busy with this or that, and we're talking on the, you know, on our live stream. What's going on in the world? Uh, I think 9-11 was such a shocking thing because it happened live for all of us, and the whole country at the same time was all watching and transfixed at what was taking place, and, and everything stopped. Everything, everybody left their offices, everybody, the classroom stopped, everybody stopped and was caught up in that. That's a pretty rare thing. Jesus is, the Son of God is being killed and nobody's paying attention. Nobody knows. And Jesus is taken off to be crucified and through the streets, but at the other end, other end of town, they're still buying and selling. Somebody's putting up their tent or taking it down. Somebody's, somebody's offering sacrifices in the temple. Uh, people are thinking about what to wear for the day. This happens to us. We're, we're talking about how, remembering how, how funny it feels to be in the hospital with a family member who's dying, but you have to eat. And so you go out and you sit in a restaurant or, I mean, people are going up and down the highway and every, you know everything's, and they're in the shopping center or outside the restaurant there. And, and you, it feels so strange. I, I've sat in the funeral procession so many times and Somebody who's in a big hurry because they have important things to do, you know, leapfrogging their way up the funeral uh, procession line to pass the funeral coach and get on their way. They don't want to be slowed down. Today's a day for slowing down. On Good Friday, this is what we want to do. 
this deserves our slowing down and our thoughts. So the songs are slow. And the thoughts are few. We want to dwell on them. And, and we want to reflect and look on in amazement at what God is doing. It's an amazing thing that God does in your life. When he takes someone home to him in heaven, when he fulfills Jesus' promise, I will come and take you to be with me where I am. It's an amazing thing, especially when God comes to us and gives his life. When Jesus is tormented and tortured at last to death, and laid in the grave, and God's work of salvation is finished. And, and our sin is crushed. And, and the world on Saturday, especially on Sunday, will never be the same again. Thank God. Amen. Let's do some more thinking today with this song, number 767, but you don't need the words. Um, Jesus, remember me. This is from somebody who was there, right? Uh, the thief beside Jesus on the cross. And we want to be beside Jesus today. And this is our prayer. <clears throat> Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.